Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. How are you guys doing? I am doing swell. Just got in from a late video, late recording here. Not that anybody cares what time of day I'm recording this. Uh, but we just got back from the movies. I saw uh, Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. That's what's become of my life now. That is my uh, my night out at the movie theater. We had it all to ourselves. It's funny. People worry about, you know, the reopening of things and whatever, you know, COVID related. Uh, but it, ironically, the two times I've gone, you know, in the last whatever three four months and things have been opened up again in my area at least i've had the movie theater all to myself so it's been very very safe and uh fun experience in that regard oh, is this, this is crazy this is getting weird bro i don't know if i want to continue doing this bro what about you are you going to the movies are you a big movie fan at all i used to be a big big movie theater fan uh anyway today's here at video is not to talk about movies it's to talk about shadow kin champions so if you're anything like me when there's a bunch they've been added a ton of new champions to the game lately i mean you see them all not just doom tower champions just i feel like every fusion there's more champions obviously but then on top of that you know every month or two they're just adding like new batches of champions as well so a lot of new champions being thrown at us and it's a little bit overwhelming especially when it comes to the newest faction and there's going to be faction wars or a faction crypt opened up for shadowkin faction pretty soon ish you know in the next few months at least i would think uh but you know regardless there's going to be faction wars so who is worth investing in here for these champions and who's just absolute trash would not invest in these champions even for just faction wars even on my free-to-play account i have maxed out most of these champions uh but let's start with the rares uh the uncommon's nothing to really write home about there so we don't even need to mention uh infiltrator and uh in conscript both of them are pretty bad uh but the rares here uh unfortunately they're all pretty bad with one exception so life taker i would not invest in assassin i would not invest in assassin hits really 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 uh X go give it to you wait for you to get it on your own X go deliver to you soft <laughs> so oh well, that's embarrassing. Uh, Blood Mask, kind of the same deal here. Hits pretty soft, so unless you're just looking for decreased speed, then why would you even bother? He does have a stun, but is that what we're, you know, is that the bar that we set here? Upgrading champions just uh, for a stun? No, on a single target? No, he is HP based, so it's a little bit easier to keep him alive, but really, I'm not enthusiastic about any of these champions, except for Odashai, or Odashai, or Odashi, no matter how you say his name. This guy's really good, actually, uh, for a rare champion. This is the only rare champion I'm recommending building for you guys. So on the A1, and not for all of you guys, but let me talk about, you know, who could potentially use this champion. So on the A1, he has a Provoke. His damage is based on defense, which is nice. His defense is solid for a rare champion at 1167. Uh, so Provoke on the A1. On the A2, he has a Shield. So an AoE attack. Three turn cooldown, and then a shield on himself for two turns, equal to 20% of his uh, max HP, which is nice because he's landing those provokes on the A1. 35% chance of landing that provoke. On the A3, on a three turn cooldown, nice too. The books go right into the cooldown on this champion. We have a block debuff for one turn, and an increased defense for two turns on all allies. And again, that's the weak version of increased defense, but still, for faction wars especially, you're going to need it from some champion. There's not a ton of them in, in Shadowkin who have it so increased defense blocks debuffs is a huge amazing skill to have and then again uh the shield the aoe attack he's, he's a champion worth looking at uh marauder not very good vagabond pretty bad and fanatic uh I, I really like the aesthetics on this dude actually speaking of aesthetics uh yeah those let's pretend those are not heads <laughs> all right fanatic uh i don't know guys he has uh his a1 is uh you know i guess the coolest thing about him right but it's only a 40 percent chance of uh, placing the big version of decreased defense for two turns if the uh, target is under two or more debuffs okay so that's cool the rest of his kit is whatever you know transferring some uh, debuffs okay and then increase attack and remove one random debuff on a three turn on a four turn cooldown yeah it just doesn't for me it's not enough to justify building that champion let's switch it up let's save the epics for last there's a lot of good epics let's go to the legendaries so legendaries i'm actually going to kind of tear them out here again i guess you can call 
Odachi, an A tier rare, I guess. Maybe B tier rare, I don't know. Uh, but other than that, they're all Fs for me, right? F tier. So, Jintoro, we're gonna give him A tier. We're gonna be pretty, you know, basic here. They're worth building or they're not. They're, they're good, they're average, or they're trash, right? Jintoro is good. Uh, you can use this dude. Jintoro is... Use him in Clan Boss. I used him in Clan Boss for a while in a Relentless set, and boy was he nasty. You can use him in Spider. You can use him in Nether Spider. Really a lot of places in the game. He has stealing 100% of the target's turn meter, reducing the Oni's Rage, which is A3. His A3 is uh, has a decreased defense, excuse me, and a weaken on a single target on a three-turn cooldown, and will attack five times instead of one on the fourth use of this skill uh, in the same round. So basically... Uh, against clan boss i mean he's doing like a million plus damage whenever it comes around uh for the fourth time right so really really cool for clan boss he out damaged dracomore for me uh which is really really cool again he has decreased defense and weakened he's bringing on a three turn cooldown so good for clan boss debuffer uh so very very interesting champion in jintoro i'm a big fan of him same thing with lady kimmy i'm just gonna say right now that jintoro lady kimmy ninja and Rio Bone Spear, I would say, are the you know the best. Uh, Riho and Lady Kimmy are probably the only two S tier champions in the legendary uh, Shadow Ken, in my opinion. However, Jintoro, Ninja, uh, and maybe Genzin are kind of A tier. And then we have uh, Ninja. Did I say Ninja too? Ninja A tier. And then uh, Yoshi also has some. U well, let's just talk about a match. Why am I? Why am I going out of order, bro? I just wanted to kind of look at them big picture here. Lady Kimmy is really, really good. She's so fast, guys. She's good for Ice Golem. She's good for Spider Arena, Doom Tower Waves, Eternal Dragon. She's incredible, man. She's a really, really fun champion. She has a lot of turn meter, a lot of control. She has decreased accuracy on an AOE, decreased speed, uh, also decreased target's turn meter. She's great for crowd control. She also has removing a buff from each enemy uh placing or a hundred percent chance win book to placing block buffs for two turns block buffs is so good guys also has turn meter fill on allies increased speed on allies she's doing a lot guys and she has this cool uh passive you guys can check out as well all about turn meter all about controlling the match it's one of those champions that you put her on your, on your if you're lucky enough to pull her you put her on your team and you're like wow I don't notice exactly how because she's doing so much in so many areas, but she's making a big impact on my team overall. Ninja, I mean, some people were very borderline. Was he going to be good? I was not. I thought he was going to be useful. What was that one word? I saw that one video. Bro! He has a freeze on an AOE, 100% land on a freeze on a four turn, solid for crowd control. And then this hail burn with the instantly activating HP burn just allows him to do an insane amount of damage. Uh, he also has a big version decrease uh, defense on his A1 at a dependable 60% land rate. So yeah, man, Ninja is really good against bosses, especially, right? Which is nice to have. Yoshi the Drunkard, uh, mainly good in... Uh, of the arena because of this ability increase attack increase accuracy and then we have a 75% chance of placing a true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn 100% instead on enemies under increase attack buffs so some people are a big fan of this uh character others are not I'm kind of uh, lukewarm I, or, or warm I, I don't use him in the arena even though I, I see the value that he can have. You can also use him in Frost Spider, though, right? So you could use him and in Faction Wars, just as a CC champion, right? I think he's worth building. He was a, uh, a Fragment Summon, so a lot of people have him. I think he'll be helpful in Faction Wars is, I guess, the long story short of it. But again, having the HP burn on a two-turn cooldown does make him worth building if you're looking for a reliable HP burn uh, placer on the Frost Spider. So next up is going to be Noble, who is the worst legendary champion. I would not build him. Ooh, Oof. I would not build him on uh, on my main account or on a first of all he's very slow what's up with that man his base stat just suck right he has a lot of attack okay he's got that going for him at least right but noble man noble 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 he's only really good guys he has a lot of synergy between fear and true fear right uh, which is kind of cool he has this is a two turn cooldown ignoring defense uh, he has decent multipliers as well, a decent base attack, but he's only really good. He's not good against bosses, right? You know, thereby, you're only really building him if you need help on waves, like Doom Tower waves. So if you don't have Seer and you pull a Noble and you're really looking for help on Doom Tower waves, I guess you could do worse, but I just don't think he is worth building personally. Whenever an enemy's turn meter is fully depleted by any champion, it's a 50% chance of placing a true fear debuff. I don't know. I guess... 
I don't know. You could pair him with a full turn meter, you know, depletion champion like Raz and Scarhide or something. Have two force champ. There's some potential there in getting the double CC, but I don't know. And basically, an empty turn meter with the uh, with the true fear. But but I don't know, man. I, he's just not not a great champion. All right, Genzin is a. I would say he's like a tier. You know, kind of the same level as you know, not the not the top two, but a little step below. He's a good, uh, you know, spirit affinity AOE decreased defense champion. 100% land rate, uh, and each critical hit fills this champion's turn meter by 10%, which is nice on a three turn cooldown. So pretty cool ability here. And then he has a hard hitting A3 as well. Let me see if I have that written down somewhere. I don't have the multipliers on the A3, but it is pretty hard hitting, and he has all kinds of turn meter fill for himself in his kit. Uh, so pretty, pretty cool champion. Uh, I don't think he's like god tier. I'd certainly rather have personally Lady Kimmy, uh, Jin Toro in Rio Bone Spear, and I guess Ninja over him, but he's uh, he's definitely in the Yoshi, a little bit above Yoshi tier. Rio Bone Spear, guys, she's in my opinion the best out of all of the Shadowkin faction champions. She's going to be a huge carry if you're lucky enough to have her in faction wars for anybody but really clan boss faction wars arena doom tower every boss pretty much you can use her everywhere she has a heal continuous heal on the a1 on the a2 look at all the debuffs she's landing good god she's landing all of these on a single target on a three turn cooldown stun hp burn decrease defense decrease crit rate attack weaken and then she has a cleanse on a three turn cooldown with block bust for two turns and a heal dude Dude, she's one of the best support champions inside the entire game. Uh, when receiving any debuffs, instantly transfers them from this uh, champion to the attacker as well. Pretty gnarly, uh, yeah, I said gnarly. Pretty gnarly passive there on her as well. Taragi the Frog is a uh, a really fun champion. Really cool for clan boss, uh, specifically because of this passive. When attacked, it's a 50% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff on the attacker for two turns. Occurs once per hit, and there's no cooldown on that. So it's a really nice poison laying passive, a la kind of Uros the Soul Cage. Uh, so pretty cool. I like that toxic blood. He also has decreased attack, HP base, easy to keep alive he has a provoke as on an aoe as well and he has a shield uh and ally protection on all allies so good for fire knight with the reflect damage good for uh clan boss obviously especially with that passive uh and the decrease attack and the support right good for on scarab king as well uh if you need the shield uh on a three turn cooldown and ally protect so you can definitely use this dude i am a big fan honestly uh, of this champion nice support here on this a3 all right, Hotas Hotatsu. Hotatsu. Hatatsu is a pretty cool champion, guys. He's B tier, in my opinion. He's good for clan boss, right? He has a leech on the A1, he has a decreased attack on the A2, and he has increased defense and continuous heal on a three turn cooldown on the A3. Really good support champion, defense base, easy to keep alive again. So I think he's definitely worth building for faction wars. And I actually think that, you know, I said B tier, I guess for an epic, he's definitely up there in terms of support options, certainly in Shadowkin faction. So I think he's worth building. Shani might be a little bit more niche. He's good for like clan boss in frost spider because she has poison sensitivity uh which is really nice to have on the a1 as well so that's a what 60 percent land rate on the a1 increase attack and increase accuracy on this champion and then hp burn if attack is critical so pretty cool uh having the increased accuracy in her kit as well on a three turn cooldown and on the a3 we have an aoe attack with a increased duration of all debuffs by one turn again good for clan boss i don't think she's going to be a uh kind of a cool passive too but i don't think she's going to be a must build for faction wars but i do think she again for uh the frostbiter and for uh clan boss she's good to build sashi sashi is good for turn meter man she's she can be an arena booster as well so i do think she's worth building if you're looking for an arena booster because of this a3 increase attack on all allies and then attacks one enemy and fills the turn meters of all allies by 20 percent if the attack is critical so again you could do a lot worse for an arena speed booster to go you know either first or second on your team she's a good go first champion and then she has again a, a leech decrease crit rate decrease accuracy on an aoe on the a1 too so i think sashi overall is a pretty solid champion uh fenshi is up next now 
Benshi is a Fire Knight specialist, guys. If you're struggling against Fire Knight, go ahead and consider building Fenshi. Also good against the Nether Spider. He has decreased speed on his A1 on a three-time hit. On his A2, he's another three-time hit with turn meter depletion on a two-turn cooldown. Again, nowhere to run indeed, man. This guy is nasty for Fire Knight. On the A3, attack one enemy two times. Each hit has a poison debuff for three turns. We'll ignore 10% of the target's defense for each poison on the target. I have not seen anybody try him in Clan Boss yet. The problem with Clan Boss is 738 base defense. That really sucks to see because otherwise he'd be a really incredible option for Clan Boss. For right now, I would only recommend you guys Nether Spider and Fire Knight. Uh, Burringiri. Burringiri is an interesting champion. He's, he's the, uh, I did like a stupid <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends short video like about two months ago about Disney villains. Yeah, nobody watched it. I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But anyway, he was Hades from Hercules. I thought that was a pretty good one. He was the uh, the finale of that uh, YouTube short. Anyway, we have Provoke on the A1. He has a stun on the A2. An AoE stun at a 60% land rate. Uh, damage based on defense. And he has a, a quite a bit of it, right? So almost 1,400 on the defense. Pretty slow. Uh, but we usually see that from our uh, Provokers. On the A3, we have Strengthen and Shield with al on allies with less than 50% HP, which is a shame, man. If that shield was just, you know, that's it. Even if it wasn't a... 15% of the target's max HP. It's not a great shield. It's on a four turn, uh, four turn cooldown, and it's not going on everybody, which really sucks. But he does have the best kind of defensive, uh, you know, alongside ally protection, I guess, damage mitigation ability in the game, buff and strengthen. So he has strengthen, he has a stun. The weird thing with this guy, though, and he's, he's tough to kill, too. He heals a champion by 50% of the max HP whenever an ally or an enemy dies. With all that said, though, he doesn't excel in any one area. You know, he's kind of a jack of all trades. He will be very helpful for Faction Wars, though. So don't, don't hesitate to build him for Faction Wars, and he might help you out in another area or two. Gennaro is really bad, and it sucks because she's the champion that we give away for free on my other channel when we advertise Raid Shadow Legends. That was just between you and me. Can't anything be private? If you want Shinara on a new account, check out the download link. I'll throw it in the description for you guys. Uh, we do have a Weaken, which is nice, on our A2. Uh, then we have a Removes All Increased Defense Bust from All Enemies and Attacks All Enemies. This is on a three-turn cooldown. Uh, so Lay Bear is an interesting ability. You could use it. You could argue that it's usable inside the uh, arena, right, if they have increased defense. But I don't know. I mean, it's not that hard hitting. That's the problem, right? So yeah, sure. You get to remove increased defense buffs, provided you have enough accuracy. And then what? You know? You're not going to kill them all, probably. Then she has like a mediocre weekend on her A2. I don't think she's worth building, unfortunately. But if you want to, again, you know. You can't fix, stupid. Gory, not very impressed with this champion at all. I do think that he is potentially worth building for Faction Wars. He's slow, 90 speed, uh, not a lot of defense either, right? He's attack-based champion, of course. Three times at random, each hit has 100% freeze on a three-turn cooldown. So not bad again, and I mentioned Faction Wars, not super impressive, but if you're looking for a dependable freeze on the A2, and then a small chance at a freeze on the A1, uh, you could do a lot worse than Gory, right? So he has ignore de increased defense and shield buffs. We'll also ignore 50% of the target's defense if they're under a freeze. And a counterattack and increase uh, attack buff on the champion if it kills an enemy. Again, one of those champions on paper seems pretty cool. I think that we're going to have to wait till Faction Wars to see if he really justifies building. Because I think there's better CC champions out there inside the game. He doesn't deal enough ja damage for an attack-based champion, in my opinion, to be worth uh, recommending highly you guys build. Jurajin is a really trash champion in my opinion. I pulled him on my free to play and there's no chance in hell that I build this dude out guys. He's an HP based champion. It's a lot of HP. He's got, got that going for him and he does have decreased attack on his A1. So not bad, but the rest of his kit, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, uh shield on himself, provoke for one turn on one enemy. Okay, a single target provoke with a million books. Cool. And then we have attack one enemy, ignore 25% of the target's defense, also ignore unkillable and block damage. So I guess a super niche arena champion, 
Uh, I don't like him. I I'd much rather go with a, a guy that we'll talk about in two seconds here. A Boro, very cool champion, guys. Great multipliers. On the A1, she has a 4.2, I believe, attack multiplier. It's one of the hardest hitting A1s in the game. Now, if it turns into an AoE attack, it's still pretty high. I think it's around 2.5, 2.6 multiplier. So again, uh, attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing the big version of decreased defense. We'll talk all enemies instead if the target is under four or more debuffs. So a pretty cool A1. And then again, multipliers just everywhere is really, really solid in her kit. Attack one enemy two times on a three turn cooldown. We have increased crit rate, increased crit damage on herself, then attacks another enemy on a three turn cooldown. Perfect veil. I like this champion a lot. She's certainly not S tier in my opinion, but she's really, really fun. And if I pulled her, I would be tempted to build her out if I'm looking for kind of an eclectic damage dealing champion in the game, you can have some fun with her in the arena as well because as I said, she hits pretty hard. Jembo the Dishonored, he's the better version of a champion that will ignore unkillable uh, buffs, right? Uh, save your uh, resources. Don't go with this guy, Jurogen. Go with Jembo the Dishonored. Granted, he is a void champion, so harder to get your hands on. And he only needs about uh, 5,000 books. I mean, good God. Play him with these new champions, dude. <laughs> An AoE attack with... Uh, Hard, all you need to know about this guy is that passive immune to decrease attack and ignore unkillable while he's under increase attack. Uh, so very, very effective for the arena, right? He has increased crit rate, increased crit damage, and then grants an extra turn. So you can open up doing this move, he'll deal even more damage, and then you go in, you kill everybody with the A2. He's a fun arena champion for sure. Taya is the last champion we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, Taya is... Really cool looking. She's no one's gonna get her for a while, right? She has decreased accuracy on her A1. She's a Doom Tower uh, secret room champion, but we'll talk about her anyway, right? Three time hitter on her A2. Each hit has a poison. That's solid, right? And then she has the poison activation and HP burn. Attacks one enemy. Has a 100% chance of instantly activating any poison and HP burn debuffs on the target. Also has 75% chance of placing a heal reduction or 100% on a three turn cooldown. I think she's going to be a good champion. I think she's going to be able to deal a ton of damage paired with another, you know, good poison HP burn champions on the same team. However, we did just get Venom Mage who, you know, arguably his kit is just as good as Taya's, a little bit different. So, you know, these instant activation champions they've been adding to the game have been amazing, but by the time anybody gets their hands on Taya, my question is, is there going to be so much power creep that it doesn't even matter anymore? Anyway, guys, not to leave you with a negative thought uh, on this video, but that's going to conclude this episode, kind of reviewing every single Shadowkin uh, champion and uh, talking about who's worth it and who's not. Let me know if you have any firsthand experience on any of these champions that I mentioned that you disagree with. So in other words, hey, you might love Noble. You might have maxed him out. Let me know about it in the comments below. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care, guys.